Hello and welcome to Racketology. My name is Zach and today I'm going to be showing you how to string on a two point drop weight Clippermate machine. We will be utilizing the basic tool set that comes with this, which will be flying clamps, pliers slash nippers, an awl, a lock pin, and a starting pin. The thing to note about a drop weight machine is that it's going to utilize both the arm and the weight to apply the tension to the string. You do want to make sure that it reaches a horizontal mark. It can be three inches above or three inches below. So it does give you a little bit of room to make sure that you're applying the tension evenly. For this demonstration we are going to be setting it at 55 pounds. So go ahead and note the indication marks on the Clippermate machine which is going to display both pounds and kilograms. Go ahead and loosen your weight and go ahead and move it up and right at the underside we're going to put it right at 55. All right now that we got it all set we're going to go ahead and grab our racket and get started. First remove the twist knobs from each post then take the top leather pads. Now go ahead and place your frame in between both posts making sure to center it as best as possible. Then put on your leather pad and then screw it down. Make sure that it's not going to be screwed down too snugly. Usually just what you can with two fingers will snug it up properly. There we go. Now go ahead and tighten up the bottom posts. This will prevent the racket from trying to move inward as you're applying attention. Right here I'm just making sure that the grommets have proper room to fit the string. Next go ahead and take your measurement of string and start gently uncoiling it, making sure not to create any kinks or get the string tangled. Now go ahead and grab your nippers and you're going to make an angled cut at your measured string. There you go. Now it will slide through a grommet easily. Take both ends of your string and lace them through the middle of the racket. Depending on whether or not you have eight holes at the bottom grommet or six holes at the bottom grommet will depend on which side you're going to start on. In my case it had, does have eight holes so I start from the top of the frame. If you do have six then you're going to go ahead and actually start from the bottom. So right here I am just going to be making sure that I have even lengths and I'm going to be pulling it across. That way uh, the racket will have enough on each side. And you see that I am straightening out the string making sure that it doesn't get tangled on the other end and create any type of weak points. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the other end and I'm going to lace it right through that grommet but as you can see I'm not actually going to go through the grommet at the end so I'm just going through one of the grommets not making a complete connection I'm going to take my flying clamp and I'm going to go ahead and clamp it down Now go ahead and do your first pull on the main that's being held by the flying clamp. Make sure that it hits that horizontal mark. And there we go. Now you're going to take your starting pin and you're going to lace it right beside that main that you just pulled. Clamp it down with your flying clamp. and release the string from the gripper. Now make your next pull on the other side as you can see here I'm making a slight readjustment to make sure that it does end up horizontal There you go. 
unhook it from where the starting pin is and you're done with the starting pin. So go ahead and clamp off and try to get it as close as you can to that other flying clamp. And continue on your next main. There we go. And now we can go ahead and move that flying clamp again over to the other side. All right, gonna go ahead and make our next pull. And once again, move our flying clamp over to the other section. Always clamping two string off at the same time. And right here is going to be our third uh, main on our right side. But on a typical racket, you don't usually want to go more than three on the other side. Now, I know that there is a, a singular pool on our left side. However, I am going to go ahead and switch and just try and equal out that pressure from the other side. So we're going to go ahead and lace that main through and get that side started. There we go. Feed it through the jaws again and make a pull. Clamp off and move it to the other side. Now continue the rest of your mains doing exactly as you were for the previous ones. Now that we've reached this portion of the mains, due to the angle of it, we are actually going to demonstrate our lock pin here. So go ahead and insert it into the base, and it's actually just going to slide right in. And once it does, that racket's not going to move whenever you actually apply tension, like how I demonstrate right here. See, it's not twisting or anything. So depending on what type of racket frame that you are stringing, it could be a good option to go ahead and use your lock pin to make sure that it doesn't twist. And you get the type of angle that you're wanting. I'm going to go ahead and lace one more main right over here. And uh, don't forget to go ahead and actually take out your lock pin as well. Alright, now that we've reached this part of our racket, we're going to go ahead and show you what to do with skips. So, you're going to see how we have two grommets right here. We're only going to actually use one. So this one is going to be our new main. And this one is going to go ahead and become our cross. So we're going to go ahead and lace this one through our main 
and just skip over that cross one. Now, some different rackets are actually going to have multiple skips, in which case this racket does have two skips. Some rackets are just going to have one. Um, so it just really depends. Uh, go ahead and uh, check up on what the ClipperMate website will actually show different stringing patterns and uh, compare it with your racket. Now we go ahead and reach our last mains. I'm just going to go ahead and pull them and clamp them off. Now some people do like to add more tension onto the actual end. Some people do, you know, like 10%, so in which case we're stringing at 55, so they do 60 pounds for the last pull. It's really just going to come down to a preference. So just make sure to stay consistent with your work, no matter what you decide. Don't want to be giving customers, uh, you know, wildly different tensions or how exactly you're going to do uh, your form on how you uh, work on a racket. There we go. So you're going to put it right through your shared hole, which will also be marked on the ClipperMate website. And we're going to go ahead and start lacing it down, up, and through. And we're going to just cinch it up. So you're actually going to pull out and then back in. So that's going to help reduce some of the slack from the outside of the frame. That way it holds a little bit more tension. And then we're just going to do one more right over top and this one you're just going to cinch right back to you and then you're going to hold the knot and remove the flying clamp and there you go that's your double half hitch all right now you're going to go ahead and trim off your ends make sure to put it flush against the frame you don't want to actually scratch the frame or anything along those lines you want to make sure that your cut is going to be nice and blunt uh, you don't want to be having it super sharp and have it cut someone's fingers. There we go. Finished with our mains. All right, now that we're going to go ahead and try and start our crosses, let me show you how exactly to weave. Now, this method is going to be to push away from yourself, in which case you're going to use your top finger to push down and your lower finger to push back up. And this is going to be one of the ways to weave the string throughout the frame. Now we're going to go ahead and demonstrate a second way, which is going to be to have the string come towards you. It's about the same form where you're going to go ahead and actually use your finger from underneath once again to push up while you use your top finger to push it back down. And right here I am demonstrating that you could also use two fingers. So it can also work out a little bit different that way. And there you go. Let's get started. Now you're going to go ahead and choose your end. And weave your first cross. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit more slack. That way I can show you how exactly to start your starting knot. Show you. Go ahead and put your string through to start your starting knot. All right, you don't need that much, but you go over once. That creates one loop and over twice. So you see, now I have two loops. You're gonna take this string and you're gonna go to the back and then to the front. But make sure these loops still stay in place. And you're gonna tighten from the back and then the front. And that's going to be your starting knot right there. All right. With your ClipperMate machine, you're going to have to start with the first two crosses because this has to grab onto two string. So I'm going to go ahead and get your string and you're going to do first pull. 
All right, go ahead and adjust it. Gonna get a little bit more of that slack out. Okay, and let me just slightly readjust it here. Okay, and there we go. And there you go. So that's going to count as your first pull. After that, I'm going to go ahead and keep stringing. A good way to know on whether or not you're doing it correctly is by making sure that it has a nice sea of waves. Just to show you what happens if you don't do it like that, say if we messed up stringing. You'd be able to see right away that is matching that string right there. And that's not what you want. You want to make sure each and every single one of your strings is going to be opposite of the other one. So, it's a good strategy to use when you're checking your work. A lot about stringing it comes down to if you check your work, you'll. Um, not not run into a lot of headaches that can happen, you know. You don't have to worry about getting all the way to the end of a racket then realizing that you've done something wrong. Which, I mean, no matter how good you are, sometimes it happens, you know. It could be one in a thousand rackets, one in ten thousand, but sooner or later, some type of mistake is going to show up. see this you go ahead and feather the string so you keep it moving while you're pulling it through that way it doesn't burn into any of these cross strings okay and go ahead and straighten your string after every pull see that way it's going to be you know Every string is going to be nice and straight instead of having that type of arc, um, which you want to avoid. And then, as I did say earlier, that you know you can also use coming toward yourself whenever it comes to stringing. So you know you can use that method as well. Each one, you know, just just do whatever feels most comfortable to you. Um, some people like away from you. Some people like toward you. There's some other different ones too that um, I, I personally wouldn't say are, are very common, but um, 
you know, I've seen some people use them and some people have great success with them. So, you know, basically just whatever helps you get the string across the racket, that's what you're aiming for at the end of the day. And as long as you get it across safely and uh, you have some growing room in your form, you know, you're going to be fine. Okay, so we're on our last cross right now. We're on our last cross right now. And as you can see, there's actually going to be where we need to get this string in. But it's not going in too easy. So you can actually use your awl and you can gently widen it, right? Because you want to make sure that you get your string inside that hole. go down and through and push it in and out comes on the other side so be very careful with your awl it is kind of sharp at the end so you don't want to go accidentally stabbing your string and creating a weak point okay but other than that it can be very useful especially for making sure that you get a nice open one right because you want to make sure that this string isn't going underneath or crossing over any of them okay so that's that's one thing that I can't do see this string right here that passes right through here if I tried to go underneath it'd be absolutely crossing over so let me just um, pull this out for for a second if I went underneath this it would be crossing this string and it would it would look something like that right so that's going to create a weak point whenever i actually put tension onto it so that's something that i would like to avoid but yeah there you go that's how you use the all all right so we're going to finish out our last main right here And there we go. That is all of our crosses. The last thing to do is to make our tie off. So my tie off hole is right there. I'm going to come on out. Oop. I'm going to go underneath up through a little bit of a tight spot and then one more
And there you go. That's how you do a racket on a Clippermate stringing machine. All right, now that we got that all settled up, go ahead and unmount your frame. And there you go, you got your racket. It's ready for play. Thanks for making it to the end of this video, guys. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you can be informed of any of the new info that we're gonna be posting on this channel. Anything from stringing techniques to racket stringing machine reviews, string reviews, and, and of course, regular frame reviews as well. So we're gonna have plenty of info on this channel. All right, other than that, take care and happy hitting.